This is an ABP Life podcast. Welcome to Cracking Conversations. I am Niharika Nanda and in this podcast we talk to people, share experiences and crack meaningful conversations. We are in the month of June, a month of happiness, a month of being proud of who you are as a person and the pride month. A month where we emphasize on the issues of the LGBTQ community where we talk about them although it shouldn't just be one month where we focus on such things it's such a global issue and we should talk more and more about it months no bar days no bar weeks no bar having said that to celebrate the occasion of the pride month we have our pride month special episodes of our podcast cracking conversations on ABP live podcasts and we are going to invite special guests belonging to the lgbtq plus community who are going to talk about the issues who are going to talk about the progress we have made nationally and globally and today for doing the same we have a very special guest with us we have prince manvendra gohil the very first member of the royalty who came out as being a gay prince firstly sir many many congratulations to you for coming out as the only gay prince in this whole world Honestly it's because of people like you who set an example of their strength that young people out there who are struggling to come out as who they are get inspired to do so having said that you understood your sexuality at a time when let alone talking about it a lot of people didn't even know about homosexuality so the entire concept of the lgbtq plus community wasn't was absolutely absent what was it like Thank you, Anni Arika, for this beautiful introduction. Let me just correct you. Uh, I happen to be the first member of a royal family in the world to come out, but uh, uh, I'm not the only one now. There are some other okay. members from the other parts of the world uh, who have made this uh, attempt and courage to uh, come out. So, but yes, I I was definitely the first person. Uh, now, coming to your question, see the courage. Uh, when people ask me about the courage part I, it is primarily the hypocrisy which was prevailing in our society which make me take this step and it, i think this hypocrisy is everywhere it is a global phenomenon yes. it is not just indian uh, i mean uh, just now i am in america and i i i'm seeing hypocrisy in america as well no mm. so it was to break the silence because i decided if we need to make change we need to talk about that right issue. is primarily the reason why i took this step uh, as it doesn't matter if it if it has to take my life uh, uh, i don't mind sacrificing my life for that but i want to talk on a subject which is existing and people are feeling shy to talk about people right. are not accept it we have to talk about it and let their debates happen let their discussions happen let their arguments happen or at least talk you know now at least the word gay is something which is spoken about Yes, you know, yes, exactly. Read the word in a dictionary. Hmm. You know, nobody even wanted to say that word. Right. So, yeah. So, sir, you yourself mentioned that some amount of change is coming now, and that people are talking about it. So, how has your experience changed from back when uh, you were not out, and now that you are? So, how what change was uh, there that you experienced after that? I think the one of the biggest change which has happened is that uh, we have much more support now. We have much more support from the community who is not LGBTQ. Right. Uh, and I call them allies. allies. So we yes, we sir. definitely a lot of allies. I see you as an important ally for us. There are, we need allies. We need people who are not just supporting us but they are openly supporting us. They are right. open about uh, talking to other people uh, and uh, you know supporting and accepting us. so i think because it is necessary that we have allies because it is only through the allies we, that we will be able to mainstream our issues in the society very true. so uh, that that's one very big change i mean though i would say the the progress is not that fast as we expected definitely. but uh, still uh, there is progress uh, definitely there is progress the very good progress which i'm seeing happening uh, particularly in india is uh, the, that this, the youth of today are taking a lot of interest yes uh, and that's a very good sign and i get calls coming from students from universities schools colleges i mean uh, i have had students as young as 13 and 14 interview me during the pandemic of oh, course with their with their parents consent the parents have also been because they are they are still minor so they, right. i would i was insisting parents also be part of it and 
they the parents used to talk to me and they are telling me that we are just waiting for you to give give green signal we want to come with our interview you but imagine young 13 14 year old boy, boys and girls such sensible questions they have asked and and they have done a thorough research on our issues and then come up with this question so that that's something which is highly commendable definitely sir and because you started talking about it because it was you initiated this conversation at some point in time that we see people today are talking about it young children are talking about it and it's more and more important because now that children younger children know that there is a thing like homosexuality they can embrace it if in case uh-huh. they are a part of that community and they should they definitely should so as you said that the change is slow but yet again it is coming so yeah. even though we live in the 21st century still we see homophobia all around us still we see practices like conversion therapy still we see people are not ready to accept their own children when they come out yeah. why yeah. do you think that this is a problem see uh, uh, you know one thing which i have uh, one one word which i have coined which uh, uh, i think i'm not me my sister transgender activist uh, sister and friend lakshmi narayan tripathi she keeps talking about this very often so you may be highly educated you may be post graduate you may be phd whatever but you are illiterate when it comes to the issues of the lgbtqi right because i don't blame the people i blame their ignorance it is our education system which has to be blamed hmm. so uh, we need to uh, have educated literacy uh, right. just education is not enough educated literacy is, is important and that's precisely the reason why their their parents or their anyone who is who has been homophobic towards us or transphobic towards us they they don't understand these issues because they have not been taught that they have not they, they have they, will, they don't know or even if they know they, they know have all the wrong information and the wrong right. education right so uh, that's something which we are working on uh, uh, you brought out a very valid point about conversion uh, therapy uh, i myself was victim of conversion i was uh, when i opened up to my parents uh, this this was much before i came out publicly Hmm. they tried to convert me and and make me straight because they thought i was abnormal that this was a disease this was a mental disorder hmm. and they they went to the extent of want they were wanting to open up my brain and perform a brain surgery on oh my god to to find out what has gone wrong and they also wanted me to subject me to electroshock therapy so the and this is very common i know a lot of parents who who make them their children undergo so much of torture and torment i don't understand why you know they are your children and just accept should, them the way they are you should love them you should accept them you have given birth to them you know why do you put the children into so much of torture and right. pain and suffering for no fault of theirs hmm. uh and that's why i decided to take this step that i need to ban conversion therapy in india and for that purpose i have to knock the doors of the court and appeal to them and for justice we need justice because this is a violation of our basic human rights Very you know true. now that even indian psychiatric association has said that homosexuality is a not a mental disorder then then why do why, we need to why go is through? it seen seen as a therapy that in, exactly. in itself it's a wrong yeah. word to be associated yeah, with such a thing Exactly. If it is is not a disease, if it is not a disorder, then why therapy? You know. Exactly. We have to just accept it. It's something like right hand versus right, left hand. How can you cure a person if he is a left handed person? And it's not a disease. You know, it's just uh, your your life. You are li- left handed since birth. Similarly, right. you are gay or bi or a straight. You are since birth. You know. If yeah. if suppose if it's possible to convert a gay into straight, then I think you can also convert straight into gay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. So easy. You know. So, so it's necessary, and I'm the, that's the, the first thing which I'm going to do is when I go back to India, I'm going to file a petition in the court, appealing to the court to ban it, ban it in India, make it illegal, so that uh, you know action could be taken against these uh, doctors or psychiatrists or even religious leaders for that matter, who are who are you know uh, uh, we have to go through so much of litigation. Yeah, uh, I mean. my parents tried uh, medical science my parents tried religion hmm. for three years i was tortured by the religious leaders and instead of becoming straight i became even more gay <laughs> you know so what is the point in wasting so much of time money efforts and right. uh, yeah so uh, i'm definitely going to take this step and uh, i will see to it that conversion therapy is banned in india so i think it's a very noble step 
for you to take because there are children out there there are people out there who are suffering for absolutely no fault of theirs so just be exactly. who they are and they don't deserve it at all so kudos to you for bringing such an important issue to light and that you want to get it banned in india india it's a, it's a really really big step thank you so much for doing that for having the courage thank to once again do that so you were invited to the oprah winfrey show and you were a part of the bbc series undercover princess so how was the experience of being on that show and being a part of the bbc series and i was invited by keeping up with the kardashians as well oh wow that's that's amazing <laughs> yeah how was, was the experience sir i was i did two episodes with them uh, okay. i was invited by, uh, kim kardashian to her home for lunch and okay. i was joined by kim chloe courtney and kendall all the four sisters met me and oh. uh, also i was invited by chris jenner mother of kim kardashian to yeah. her, her home and the basic the, the main thing which we whether it was oprah or or it was the kardashian it was it was highlighting the issues of being gay or the highlighting the issues or the struggles the, the with the lgbt community have to go through and particularly right. india so, and uh, very positively they all spoke about the, the issues and they were able to influence the mindsets of lot of individuals including indians you know uh, the one of the important uh, uh, interesting thing i want to point out in 2017 i did the show with keeping up with the kardashians and uh, i don't say because of me it happened but then the very next year we got our rights you know the supreme court yeah, uh, changed the law but right. when I, when i came back to india there were so many people who were homophobic they were against mm. me there was such a hatred against me people didn't like me and when i came back all those people who hated me they came to say and came to me and say uncle can we have a selfie with <laughs> i said wow uh, and right. i but i said i was very sarcastic i said am i not a criminal <laughs> this oh, no 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 you are not a criminal right. you are an angel you, i became an angel you know just by doing one kardashian show from a criminal i became an mm-hmm. angel so you see how much power these people have Very uh in, but but my question is that why do we need to go to oprah and why do we need to go to kardashians to change indian mindsets Very don't in, indians realize that india is the land of kama sutra and khajuraho Hmm. Where sex was and homosexuality was part of our culture. Right. Why do we go to a foreign person to make Indians understand? I don't. Not know. our own scriptures. Exactly. So we are. That means we either we don't know or we are not proud of our Indian cultural heritage. You know. Or more it, like we're not even aware of that that part of our Indian scriptures. That is also exactly. a very big issue. Yeah. There, there is a there is a lot of ignorance, and that's that's something which we need to educate our people about. That uh, the, our culture has been so rich that right. uh, we had sex, sexuality, gender, and these issues were written 500 years even before Jesus Christ was born. Right. But yet, sex education is denied in our education. Again, sir, it comes back to what you said earlier that education and literacy are two different things, and yeah. people really need to be. educated about homosexuality about sexuality in general sex education yeah. in itself is such a missing thing when it comes to our education system so homosexuality is still a step beyond so we really need to uh, climb those steps that we can actually genuinely educate our coming generations yeah definitely you had inaugurated the euro pride festival in stockholm sweden at a festival yeah. and at the festival there must have been a lot of people from the lgbtq community from the queer community so yeah. how was the feeling how how did it feel to see so many people who were there being themselves and celebrating it how was the feeling to see that yeah i was invited to inaugurate this pride in stockholm the one of the interesting things which i people i met was i met parliamentarians there who have fought oh. the election on the basis of their sexuality so openly openly gay uh, parliamentarians openly uh, you know lesbian uh, parliamentarians uh, uh, so that means that they are they uh, they are they are so liberal they have accepted uh, you know uh, these issues uh, so much in the past that now politicians they run they fight elections on the basis of their sexuality and they win the win the parliaments right. you know sweden was also one of the first countries in the world to have uh, legalized same sex marriage Okay. Uh, oh. uh, and uh, and not just that. I met even allies. I in fact I met somebody uh, called Sue. Her name is. Um, hmm. She has started something called Straight Gay Alliance. Okay. Uh, so she was one of probably the one of the first ones to start a Straight Gay Alliance. Right. I met her in Stockholm, and later on I met her again in New York. 
so the, 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 there has been a considerable uh, allyship movement uh, hmm. which is going on uh, who are supporting us right. in spite of the there are see there is a lot of uh, people who are opposing us as well in, but we have to fight back there is no choice we have to fight back we have to fight this hypocrisy because we need to stand up for ourselves and we need to be true to ourselves and only then yes. can we actually be true to the world so exactly. if we well are said. fighting for our own truth we are own, we are fighting for our own rights then that is the most important thing ever exactly exactly so you mentioned that right now uh, you are in the us so uh, can you share the purpose of uh, your trip to the united states so uh, after my oprah's interview i realized that uh, she gave me an opportunity to fight for my, uh, my rights on a global front right first i was doing it within india india hmm. but then uh, because of her she was becoming so popular i was invited by so many countries in the world and i decided to use this global platform to do the advocacy for my rights for a lot of other things i i'm even even uh, fighting for uh, hiv aids issues i'm fighting okay. for human trafficking yeah i'm uh, sitting on the board of an organization called uh, Eyes Open International is an American non-profit organization uh, okay. uh, started by one of my friends, and I am addressing issues of human trafficking also, which is very important because India is the source and America is the destination. So I have I have come here to to address all these issues, how India and America can join hands uh, and work together to eliminate uh, or to reduce discrimination, to bring about equality, uh, how to see that LGBT rights. can be further strengthened how we can work on human trafficking issues how we can work together for hiv and aids issues so these are the issues which i have uh, i have come here to talk to and i'm meeting some of the very lead- senior leaders here i already met some congressmen okay. in uh, bedford i met some mem- from pe- some political uh, people also and now i'm going to ohio i'm going to meet the governor of ohio and i'm oh, going to meet the sen- uh, i'm meeting the senators and so you know because these are our leaders these are our, right. our policy we have to spread the word you know we have mm-hmm. wherever I, i i spread the word and uh, my fight is global it's not limited to india alone yeah right so I'm, as and uh, why it's global is because i i i believe in the sanskrit uh, uh, shloka which you may be aware of uh, vasudev kutumbakam Kutumba. yeah. yes sir. means whole world is one family very for true. me i I don't just yes I'm I'm proud to be born in India and I'm proud to be of Indian herit cultural heritage but I belong to the whole world very right yes sir. and, and sir bring- the, the issue that you are fighting for is a global issue it's not just yes. to in India definitely yeah sir firstly thank you so much for joining me today it's a long fight that you were fighting you've been fighting it all your life and initially it was for yourself and now it's for the entire world that you are doing this Again, Vasudev Kutumbakam. The world is our family, and we have to do it for our family. That's the whole idea. It's amazing the kind of work that you are doing, and we are so thankful here in India. People outside in the world whose life is being affected in a positive manner because of you. So thank you, thank you so much for joining me today, Prince Manvendra. It was really delightful to have this conversation with you. Thank, thanks to you as well. So you just heard Prince Manvendra talk about all the issues and all the struggles that he had to face and the kind of things that people even are facing today things like conversion therapy things like people torturing their children just for being real just for being the way they are and that is exactly what we need to change in our society however something that we need to focus on that change is coming and it is through people like Prince Manvendra that we are seeing this change And I really hope that there are people out there who are listening to him, who are seeing him as he works towards the rights of the queer community, of the LGBTQ plus community. And I hope that you get inspired to understand who you really are and come out as who you really are. For more meaningful conversations, tune into Cracking Conversations with me, Niharika Nanda, on ABP Life Podcasts. The scripting and the voiceover for this episode was delivered by me, Niharika Nanda. Our special guest for the day was. Prince Manvendra Gohil and the sound designing was done by Lalit. See you soon with some more meaningful and cracking conversations only on ABP Life podcasts. This is an ABP Life podcast.